Greetings, dear brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Once again, to him and him alone be all the praise, honor, and glory. And today is the second day, right, Anna? Yes. Yeah, today is the second day of the 11th month of the year 2017. Dear brothers and sisters, today I'm here with our 8-year-old daughter, Anna. We continue today with our getting and knowing the journey of rapture. The Jewishness of rapture. We continue our journey through the Hebrew letters, through the Hebrew Aleph Beth. So today we are in Daleth. Anna is going to talk about the Daleth, how, what the Lord has. About the Jewishness of rapture through Daleth, what it is all about. As well as the Lord, the Spirit of God has guided Anna to talk about. So she will talk about that today. So dear brothers and sisters, we once again encourage you to... Please do we all understand now slowly we are getting in the realms of understanding the, our Jewish roots, dear brothers and sisters. So our Jewish roots is just not limited to the seven festivals, ordained festivals, which is which we find in the book of Leviticus. But there is a lot more to it, dear brothers and sisters. So we continue, continue on this journey as the Lord led us to start this journey for Anna. So... Today we encourage you, dear brothers and sisters, once again, to hear, hear us out. And we most importantly encourage you once again, dear brothers and sisters, two things as we keep telling. Number one is to invite the presence of God as 1 Corinthians 2.14 is our authority. It tells us without the Spirit of God, all these things are foolishness. The other day I was trying to put up a message which the Lord led us, which we were trying to tell how the enemy actually steals kills and destroys these messages, the inner meaning, what Messiah has for these messages. So please do invite the presence of God as we pray together. And number two is please, as Dr. Luke tells us in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, please don't believe anybody, whoever, whatever they say, unless you take it to your prayer closet. And most importantly, dig in the scriptures, dig in the scriptures. If the scripture is not... Telling what we say, it's not telling with it. Then there is a red flag, dear brothers and sisters. So we encourage you once again to please do be an active medium. Dig in the scriptures. We will have Anna will give us a whole lot of scriptures to, to dig into, dear brothers and sisters. So let's do that. And let's start with a word of prayer and invite the presence of God. Shall we, Anna? Yes. All right. Heavenly Father, we come this day in your presence. In the name of Bob, every single name of our King Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, we just praise you and give you all the glory and honor and power, Lord, for one more day you have given us. One more day where you have fulfilled your divine promises in our life. One more day where you have protected us for your divine protection, for your divine providences. Father, we thank you today for one more day you have given us to walk by faith. One more day to realize the incredible, incredible, incredible extremes you have went on our behalf so that we may have life and life in abundance. One more day to realize that he who has given his son to butchery, that why will he not today deliver his believer? Why will you not deliver today whatever we are in? Lord, we bring this time in your presence. We bring ourselves in your presence. We bring all our Fellow brethren, our dear viewers, right this moment in your presence, Lord, we pray. Once again, Lord, pour out your spirit at this time, Lord, and we once again, dear brothers and on our dear brothers and sisters, help, help them, Lord. Guide them, Lord, to understand your supernatural message. Help us today to realize that this is a divine appointment. If we I hear our fellow brethren, I all are here by a divine appointment instituted by you because in your house there are no accidents, there are no coincidences. So at this time, Lord, we bring especially Anna in your presence as Anna is about to convey your message about the Jewishness of rapture through Dalit. Please do enlighten all of our hearts and minds with your Holy Spirit and please be our strength when we are weak. I claim on Psalm Chapter 141, verse 3, and pray, Father, please do set a guard over our mouths and please do keep watch over the door of our lips as Anna conveys your message to your appointed people about the Jewishness of rapture. 
and in the name above every single name of our Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, using our authority of Luke 10, 19, right this moment, we bind every single evil of the enemy, which is coming at this time, which is coming at our fellow brethren, our dear viewers, and we pray for the hedge of protection for each one of us. And we pray once again for each and every viewer that may the Lord guide you through His Holy Spirit and help you to receive this message from our coming King, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, in whose holy, mighty name we do pray. Amen, amen. and amen and amen. All right, you can go ahead, Anna, please. Okay, so that is the fourth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The symbol of this letter is a door. The Hebrew spelling for Dalit is Dalit Lamid Tav, but it can also be pronounced Delit. And that word means a door or a gate in Hebrew. And Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 7, I am the door of the sheep. So it is through Jesus that we can pass from darkness and enter into light. When we pass through Jesus from darkness to light and from death to life, we are no longer in the darkness. We have passed over to life. And Jesus is our light, and he is the way to pass over to that light. Jesus himself said in John chapter 8, verse 12, that he is the light of the world. He said in John 10, 7 and 10, 9, that he is the door. And he said in John chapter 14, verse 6, that he is the life. And he said in John 10, 10, that he has come to give us life. And John chapter 10 verse 10 says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So what Jesus is seeing is that the thief comes to do three things. Number one, he comes to steal. He comes to steal your peace and comfort and fill you with gloom. Number two, he comes to kill. He comes to kill your hope and make you feel hopeless. Number three, he comes to destroy. He comes to destroy your strength, which comes from God, and make you feel weak. So the thief will come to do these things. But Jesus has come to restore that and give you more than what you can imagine. It's like the story of Job. Job had a lot of wealth and everything he needed, and then Satan took it away. But later, God restored all of it and more. But the point is, Jesus is the door to life, while he is also the life. In Psalms chapter 119, the column for that, that is our verses 25 to 32. In this column, the psalmist asks God to bring him through the door so he can pass from all his troubles into life. Through this column, the psalmist also declares that he will dwell on the Lord's commandments. He also begs God to bring him through his trials by God's word. Verse 25 says, My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. So here in the first verse, we see that it is a plea to God so that God carries the psalmist through all his trials, temptations, and mainly his despair. The next verse, verse 26 says, I have declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. This verse is a declaration that God will bring the psalmist through and answer him. Moving on to verse 27. Make me understand the way of your precepts, so I shall meditate on your wonderful works. So if you are on one side of the door, you cannot be on the other side at the same time. So the psalmist wants to be on the good side of the door, so he can understand God's precepts. As we know, Jesus is the door. He is the way to cross over from the sinful place to the place of freedom. He brings us into the heavenly or holy place where we experience his spirit. And when we experience his spirit, then we understand through the spirit of God, the way of God's precepts. The spirit of God shows us the way of God's precepts. He, make us, he makes us understand them and he directs us, telling us how to walk on that path. But it only happens when we enter the door. Because Jesus, who is the door, is the only one who can bring us to the place where we experience his spirit. And then we understand the way of his precepts through his spirit. So the point is, as the psalmist wants to understand the way of God's precepts, he wants to enter the door. We should enter the door to understand the way of God's precepts. Moving on to verse 28. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. 
This verse is a plea so that the psalmist is brought over from his bondage into God's freedom. He wants to cross the door to enter God's freedom. Throughout this column, the column for the letter Dalit, in every verse, the way of Jesus being a door, the matter of it, is used differently. And we will talk a little about this when we reach the end of the psalm. Moving on to verse 29. Remove me from the way of lying and grant me your law graciously. Here in this verse, the psalmist asks God to take him out of the place of his sin and put him in the place of obedience to God's law. In the psalm, it repeats over and over the idea of having, knowing, and obeying God's law. But we are not bound by the law. We are not under its control. So what is it speaking about? It's saying that if we confess to God our problems, and if we try to glorify God in all we do, God will make us fulfill his commandments. Let's move on to verse 30. It says, I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. In this verse, the psalmist declares that he has chosen the way of truth. He has chosen the way Jesus has set for him. In Matthew chapter 20, chapter 7, verses 13 through 14, we see that Jesus says that there are two paths. One is broad and one is narrow. The narrow path leads to life, but the broad path leads to destruction. The narrow path is hard to find. As for the broad path, many will go on it, but only a few will go through the narrow path. But coming back to the psalm, let's move on to verse 31. It says, I will cling to your testimonies. O Lord, do not, push me, do not put me to shame. So here, the psalmist tells the Lord what he will do, and so he asks the Lord to hold him up. And the next verse, the closing verse, verse 32, is the main verse. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. We say that this is a firm declaration, that because God will bring the psalmist through, the psalmist will obey God's commandments. And before we talk about the journey of rapture, I would like to talk about the way the column for that in Psalm chapter 119 is designed. Let's say there are two spaces. One is a good space and one is a bad space, and the spaces are separated by a door. In each verse, the good and bad spaces are something different. Here's how. In verse 25, the good space is relief and freedom from troubles. The bad space is anxiety, troubles, and fear. In verse 26, the bad space is the struggle with sin, and the good space is knowing God's law. In verse 27, the bad space is not understanding God's law. And the good space in verse 27 is understanding God's precepts. In verse 28, the bad space is weariness and the good space is relief. In verse 29, the bad space is evil deeds and the good space is God's good law. And in verse 30, the bad space is lies and deceit. The good space is the way of truth. In verse 31, the bad space is shame. And the good space is clinging to God's testimonies. In verse 32, the bad space is disobedience. The good space is obedience to God's law. We also see that when this column starts, the psalmist talks about his troubles. But by the time the column ends, by verse 32, he is talking about God's deliverance. That's what God's word does. Talking about God's word takes you out of your trouble. So let's see what the journey of rapture is in this Hebrew letter. As we know, on one side of the on one side of the door is our filthiness, and on one side is God's presence. So we want to be on the good side, in God's presence. If, if we are, then we are ready for rapture. And before we end, let's just review the letters we have learned about in this journey of the Hebrew alphabet. The first letter was Aleph. The spelling for Aleph in Hebrew is Aleph Lamed Pe. Aleph Lamed and this, and that spells the word El in Hebrew. And that word, and El means God. And the symbol for Pe, the last letter in the spelling for Aleph, the symbol for Pe is a mouth, indicating breath or going forth. So we see that God, who is the first and preeminent one, sends us for, forth. Then the second letter we learned was Bet. Bet 
which symbolizes a tent, is our temporary dwelling. But then we start to walk away from that tent, and that's the letter Gimel. And then we pass through the door, which is Jesus. That indicates coming to know him. We start to be in his presence. And as we walk our journey in the light of God's presence, let us keep encouraging one another and stay in God's presence. Thank you, everybody, for viewing us. And may the Lord God Almighty bless you in abundance. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much, Anna, for once again reminding us, telling us about Dalit, door. Jesus is indeed the door. As we see on the cover sheet, dear brothers and sisters, that most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. That's Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. As we continue on this journey, dear brothers and sisters, as Anna was telling, we are at the fourth Aleph Beth. We are on the fourth Hebrew alphabet now. From Aleph, we start to learn. From Aleph, Beth, Gimel, and Dalit, we are on the fourth. From Aleph, as Anna was telling us that God has sent us forth. Beth is the tent which we were looking into. And last time we talked about Gimel. And we were talking about Sukkot. Dear brothers and sisters, we all got ex so excited during the time of Sukkot. And we don't want that excitement to die down, dear brothers and sisters. Perhaps the Spirit of God was trying to convey us something. It was perhaps not about all about every time cracking the rapture. But God probably is trying to convey something through that, dear brothers and sisters. As we, God has sent forth through Aleph, we learned. And through Beth, we realized that that's our, that's the tent and the, Foot, Gimel, is walking away from the tent. So we realize that in Sukkot that we make sukkahs and stay in our temporary dwelling room. Which makes us realize that this earth is our temporary dwelling. We are strangers here and we are indeed looking for our permanent place. The maker and builder of that city, of that place is Messiah himself. So today, dear brothers and sisters... As we turn that foot in Gimel, today is the day to come to the door, Messiah, Dalek. Today is the day Messiah is inviting each one of us, dear brothers and sisters. If you have been a far away from the door or a little away from the door, if you have not crossed that door, today is the day for crossover. Today is the day to cross over from this side, the bad side, the sinful side and cross over to the other side. Where? Messiah's will, Messiah's glory awaits for each one of us, dear brothers and sisters. In the scriptures, as we see the door, the shadow of the door, as we see in Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13, we all talk about the five foolish and the five wise virgins. In same parable, there is the gloomy shadow of the door. What happened? Matthew chapter 25. Verse 10 says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And we are talking about the foolish virgins, the five foolish virgins, while they went to buy, who didn't have the oil to start with. And they basically went to buy the oil. The bridegroom, bridegroom came. And those who were really ready, those who were ready, those who were the wise virgins who actually had the oil, went in with him to the wedding. And what happened then? The door was shut. Tough stuff. Strong words. The door was shut. Your brothers and sisters, today the door is open. Today the door is open. The promise to the church of Philadelphia, Messiah gives in Revelation chapter 3 verse 8. That's explicitly for the church of Philadelphia. And if we claim to the bride, be the bride of Christ, bride of Messiah, then that's church of Philadelphia. That's us. And in Revelation chapter 3 verse 8, Says, I know your works. Messiah says, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word and have not denied my name. So Messiah has opened the door and no one can shut it. But we have to cross over. Today is the day to cross over. Today is the day. Messiah, as he says in Revelation 3.20, today is the day. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me, dear brothers and sisters. Today is the day he is knocking on the door. He is knocking. Today is the time to cross over. Today is the time. 
We don't want to miss this opportunity, dear brothers and sisters. In our valleys, we need to cross over today, dear brothers and sisters. Today, whatever in your valleys, if you are heaped upon with a lot of difficulties, today Jesus is knocking, come to the door, come to the door. Dear brothers and sisters, oftentimes, oftentimes our difficulties, in our difficulties, the enemy makes us think that our difficulty is a bad thing. But dear brothers and sisters, if we try to see the Hebrew word for difficulty, it is pele, P-E-L-E-H, pele. That's the Hebrew word for difficulty. And as a matter of fact, if we see the Hebrew word for miracle, it's the same word, pele. P-E-L-E-H, P-E-L-E-H, Pele, is the same word, dear brothers and sisters. That points us to the fact that if we have this Jewish root, if we understand what's going on, that every difficulty in our lives is a potential miracle. Every difficulty is put in our lives so that God can convert it through his miracle, so his glory, so he can be exalted. So his glory can be revealed in our lives, dear brothers and sisters. All, all across the Gospels, we see the miracles of Messiah laid out with the blind, the lame, the crippled, the poor, the grieving, those in mourning, the thirsty, the sick, the lepers, the guilty, the sinful, the outcast, you name it. All across the Gospels, we see how from one side of the Pele, the difficulty, they cross over to the glorious side of Pele. The miracle. Dear brothers and sisters, miracles indeed happen only in our difficulties. When we enter through that door, when we enter through that door, through Messiah, miracles indeed can and will happen. Dear brothers and sisters, today is the day, today is the day Jesus is knocking on that door. Today we all need to come through that door so that Messiah can turn all your difficulties, all your valleys into his glorious miracles for his glory. All across the Gospels, dear brothers and sisters, those who found these miracles, those who crossed over from the Pele, bad side, the difficulty, to the good side of Pele, the miracle, are the ones who lifted up their difficulties and approached the door, approached Yeshua HaMashiach with their withered hands, with their crippled fingers, with their sinful eyes, with their guilt, with their shame. And Messiah, Messiah touched them and transformed their difficulties to miracles, to the good Pele. Dear brothers and sisters, our difficulties, our difficulties, our Pele is the very ground where Messiah is will, willing to turn it to miracles, to the good Pele. If we approach that door in truth, today is the day. King David says in Psalms chapter 145 verse 18, The Lord is near to all who call upon him. To all who call upon him in truth, dear brothers and sisters, today is the day wherever you are in. Come to that door. Today is the day for crossover. Make that decision. The best decision you can ever make. Give it all. Lay them all down in front of him. Just come to him as you are. Nothing in, a, nothing in your hands you bring but to unto the cross. Unto the cross you cling. Because that cross lot happened on that cross. Everything changed. Everything changed that day. Today is the day to come to the door. Today is the day Jesus is calling you today. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, now is your time, dear brothers and sisters. If you are hearing his voice, don't resist it. Don't resist it. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he is ready. He will come in today to dine in with you. He is ready. He says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me, dear brothers and sisters. And that will be the best dinner of your life. Believe me, dear brothers and sisters, that will be the best dinner of your life. Dinner with Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. The one who is your maker, the one who is our maker, our creator, the one who gave up everything he had so that. The pole of the great price, Matthew chapter 13. The Paul of the great price. He gave everything he had. Everything. Why? So that you and me can have life in abundance. Dear brothers and sisters, today is the day Jesus is knocking on that door. If you are far away or if you are close to that door, wherever you are, if you have not crossed over from your bad Pele, from the difficulties, cross over today to the good Pele, to the miracles. Today is the day. 
We thank you, dear brothers and sisters, once again for viewing us. We thank you, dear brothers and sisters, for all your inputs, your comments, your suggestions. We thank you for all your prayers, dear brothers and sisters. And today we hope once again on our journey with the Hebrew Aleph Beth to understand this, how to be ready through the Hebrew Aleph Beth, the Jewishness of rapture. We hope that this message encourages each one of us, dear brothers and sisters, this is the time for crossover. We are at the end of the end of the end of the end moment. So today, let's once again keep praying for each other, dear brothers and sisters. Please do keep praying for me and my family, Anna, David and my wife, dear brothers and sisters. And we will definitely keep, we are praying for every single one of you, our fellow brethren who have asked for prayer. So let's keep praying for each other. Let's fight this good fight with Messiah's strength. And let's today cross over from our bad Pele to our difficulties to the good Pele. Our miracles. We thank you, dear brothers and sisters, once again. And let's just end with a word of prayer. Shall we, Anna? Yes. Okay, then you can go ahead, please. Dear Jesus, can I thank you for this time which you've given us, Lord. And I thank you for all the messages you've hidden for us in your word and in this Hebrew alphabet, Lord. And help us, Lord, to claim on your promises, Lord. And today, help us, Lord, to cross over the door, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be in you, Lord. And help us to worship you in all we do. And bless us as we go forth from here and fill us with your Holy Spirit. And bless our viewers and fill them with your Holy Spirit. And talk to us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, once again for viewing us. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters. Let's fight this good fight. Let's keep up the faith and finish this race strong. And as today, once again, dear brothers and sisters, as Isaiah says in chapter 55, verses 6 and 7, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him. While he is near, today, dear brothers and sisters, is the time to cross over. Today is the time to cross over that door, Messiah. We pray again that may Messiah Yeshua HaMashiach strengthen you and empower you so that his mighty will be accomplished through each one of you. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, and God bless you all.